Hello and welcome to yet another Harry Potter TCG stream here on Kitchen Meta. Um, today we are, of course, as usual, we are playing Harry Potter TCG and we are playing the classic format but with my three house rule modifications. Um, there is a link in the description to a video that talks about these changes and why they were made, except for one of them. But uh, the summary is we are... Um, the the card caught by Snape is banned, uh, we were playing today. Um, the starting player does not draw a card on their first turn, and the unique rule only applies to your own board, although that one uh, should not be relevant today actually, because uh, I don't think any of the decks that will be playing against each other actually clash in that way. Um, but that is the context. Um, yeah, if. Um, if you're new, feel free to ask any questions, but it may be hard to follow along uh, to um, uh, the gameplay if you haven't seen the decks before. Um, they are should all be on the channel, either as live streams or as videos, uh, so feel free to go and check them out. You can find links to that in the description as well. Um, today, uh, the plan is, as usual, to present uh, new decks, and also I'm going to be talking about some experimentation with old decks. Uh, uh, we're gonna, you know, uh, show some maybe developments in some decks and if those work, uh, we're gonna be trying them out against other decks. Um, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I have a bit of a cold today, but you know, we can't let that get in the way of the magic of a wizardry. So um, today I will uh, yes, let's um, let's jump right into this deck that I have on screen. Uh, I guess first of all, let's say that there's there is a bit of a theme today, uh, kind of vague, but uh, Peeves here is called the ghost, even though he's technically a poltergeist. Which, according to the lore that I actually read about, that's not that's not a ghost. It's a kind of spirit but it's not a ghost. Um, so the, um, um, yeah, yeah. So the Peeves is a ghost and we also have a deck today that features nearly headless Nick. That is a ghost, but let's, since, um, let's, let's find nearly headless Nick. This guy. Oh, actually. Okay. I don't know why, but Nearly Headless Nick does not count as a ghost, apparently. I would have assumed that he would count as a ghost, because he is a ghost. But there you go, the, the card that is a ghost does not count... Sorry, that is not a ghost counts as a ghost, and the one who is doesn't count as a ghost. But they are both spirits, so I guess that's a, that's the a theme of today. Um, so the first deck <laughs> that I will be showing is a deck that we're actually not going to be playing today. I'm pre presenting this creepy control deck um, to contrast it to a better version of the same deck, and I want to talk about the the, the um, you know the difference between those two. So, uh, Colin Creevy is a card that uh, is is the starting character for this deck, and he is a card that uh, lets you once per turn force uh, both players to draw three cards um, by using an action. And um, sorry, um, yeah. So you can you can make your opponent draw cards, and the idea in this deck is you can combine uh, Colin. Um, you can use Colin to make your opponent draw a lot of cards, and then you can use the effect of grip hook, uh, grip hook to make your opponent discard their hand and draw as many cards as they discarded. Um, and so with this combination, uh, you can make them draw a lot of cards and then take a lot of damage by using grip hook. And then you also have Peeves, that uh, you can have both players discard their hand and draw up to seven cards. So if you use Peeves, um, you can get your opponent to seven cards. Uh, you can combine that with Colin uh, to get them to ten. And then you could use Grip Hook to make them discard ten and draw ten. So you have some combos there to make your opponent draw cards uh, from their deck and basically deal damage to them in a way that doesn't uh, require a lot of power um, and uh, yeah, it can be quite effective. But the problem is, of course, characters cost two actions to play. And in this deck, we're trying to solve that by playing some cards that make them 
less expensive to play. We have uh, Lockhart's Hair Care Potions, which is an item that lets you play your character cards for one action instead of two. And you have uh, the Leaky Cauldron uh, that does the same thing, but for both players. And it's a location and uh, it costs, requires two power. Um, and we have a bunch of other stuff here, but um, one of the main ideas with this kind of deck is that you play this card called uh, Magical Mess Remover. Um, a Magical Mess Remover is a spell that just uh, lets you choose any of your cards in play and discard them, which may seem like a weird thing to do. But remember in Harry Potter there is the unique rule, so uh, if we want to use Grip Hook's effect again, for example, we would need to get rid of our old copy of Grip Hook before playing a new Grip Hook. So we can use, um, where is it? There we go. Uh, we can use a uh, Magical Mess Remover to get rid of uh, the copies of characters that we have already used. Uh, and uh, well, uh, the ones that have ones per game effects. And uh, then we can play them again and repeat their effects. Now, this deck is also playing stuff like Muffling Draught to try to stop our opponents from messing with us, but, uh, it, and that can be effective to some degree, but I would still say this deck has a lot of problems and weaknesses in that it's kind of slow. First of all, you're spending a lot of actions to draw with uh, Colin, which are basically just helping your opponent get cards, and then you, you have to play one of the cards that make uh, characters um, less expensive and your opponent can mess with that in several ways they can get rid of your items maybe they can get rid of leaky cauldron or maybe you just don't draw those cards um, they can uh, yeah disrupt you in several ways they can get rid of your lessons to stop you from from playing what you want to be playing and just slow you down so that you don't really have the time to do all the things that you want to do Remember, you kind of want to be using Colin a lot, but if what if you need to be using Colin and also establishing uh, <laughs> a card like Lockhart's Hair Care Potions and the Leaky Cauldron, then it's like a lot of actions for different things and it takes quite a lot of time to get there. Your opponent can mess with you in a lot of ways. So uh, we are playing Seamus Finnegan to get extra actions with those extra cards that we have. But again, in order for him to be at a reasonable cost, we still have to uh, play Lockhart's Hair Care Potions or something first. So the deck is, is like a fun concept, but I would say that this is not the, the final form of this archetype. Um, oh, by the way, I forgot to mention this, this magical mess remover thing is actually something uh, I've talked a lot about how um, I've, I've, my experience with the game has largely been isolated from th the community of the game, but this was actually an idea that I got uh, from reading a forum post way back and someone was talking about using Magical Mess Remover. So that was the, the genesis of this whole idea. And uh, Colin in the deck that was mentioned was the starting character. Um, but they didn't, they didn't post the deck list or anything, they just talked about the deck. But... Um, uh, I will argue now that this is not the way to build this deck and we're gonna show exactly how it should be built which is by playing Ron Weasley as the starting character surprise surprise uh, once again um, Ron turns out to be the best way to do this kind of thing because Ron uh, has the built-in effect to make all your characters cost one action instead of two so um, so you don't you don't need to wait for for the discount of your characters, and also there's no way for your opponent to disrupt the discount. They cannot get rid of uh, Ron because he's your starting character. So you're always going to have that discount. There is no way for them to mess with it, and um, and so we're we um, we can do the things that we wanted to do, playing um, Peeves for just one action as early as turn one. Um, we can also play the, the draw engine that the other character decks are playing with Ginny Weasley and uh, we, we can use Seamus Finnegan to get extra actions once again. And this is way easier to establish than in the other version. Um, and then we can just play Colin Creevy in the deck, so we don't have to have him as a starting character, we just play Colin 
uh, when we're comfortable to do so and when we, when we actually want to start using his ability. So uh, we're prioritizing the discount of characters, which I think is totally correct. And then, of course, we're playing Griphook, we're playing Peeves, and we can play four copies of Peeves in this version. Um, and we don't have eight cards in our deck that are just clogging our game plan, that are just there to make our characters less expensive. Instead, we just have our starting character do all of that work for us. Um, and the beautiful thing about this is that um, everything that we're doing in this deck is something that cannot be... Uh, you cannot really... It's very hard to stop us from doing it. So uh, if, if our opponent plays a deck like the McGonagall uh, Lesson Destruction deck, they can get rid of our lessons, they can sometimes get rid of our cards, but they can never uh, stop us completely from playing things because our characters, they don't require uh, any power to be played. So those can always be played. And then when we want to play the Magical Mess Remover, we can actually play the card that gives us power and the Magical Mess Remover in the very same turn uh, and thus totally uh, avoid our opponent from having any opportunity to get rid of the lesson before we can make use of it. Um, and yeah, the rest, uh, that, so that is the basic idea. Um, we're also playing uh, Crab and Goyle in this deck. Uh, which is very unusual, but that's just to have an extra way to deal damage to our opponent. So Crab and Goy lets us use an action and discard two cards from a hat to do three damage to our opponent. Um, it's just meant to provide um, an extra option for dealing damage, because in this deck, uh, the cards that are really important to the deck are actually kind of few. So we can play a lot of copies of those cards, um, and we don't need to play that many cards that give power because we only ever need one power to be able to play Magical Mess Remover. Uh, you could argue we should be playing Muffling Draught in this deck, and maybe you're right, but um, for for now we're not. But it could be it could be a cool idea. Um, so that means we can play four copies of all of the characters we are playing, including playing a weird character like Crab and Goyle. Uh, just to give us extra options to deal damage, even though this isn't the most efficient way of doing so, um, it can be useful. Um, then we have, of course, a lot of healing. Magical Mess Remover can <laughs> get rid of, um, you know, any of our ones per game effects. So that means if we we can uh, get rid of Madame Pomfrey and play a new Madame Pomfrey, uh, same with Snape. Uh, so not only is Magical Mess Remover useful in an aggressive way. It can also be used to heal ourselves. It can be used to make Hannah Abbott's uh, ability useful uh, once more. Uh, it can be used to allow us to use uh, Quirrell again. Um, the, so the very the very best um, matchup for this deck is matchups where our opponent is trying to disrupt us and then finish us off with creatures because of the fact that they can never put us in a place where we cannot play cards, um, or, or it is very hard to do so, because we have a bunch of things that, for example, get rid of adventures. Um, it means that they are, they are kind of, they, they lack an angle to really attack us from, because we can get rid of their creatures easily, we can heal ourselves easily, and we also have a very simple way of making them draw cards and get closer to a running out of cards in their deck. Um, so that is where the deck shines. Uh, if we're up against a combo deck, that is where the deck does not shine at all, because uh, by making them draw cards, we can actually accidentally speed up their combo and make them kill us even faster. Uh, so uh, we will actually not be showing... Well, we will sort of be showing that matchup today, but we will mainly focus on the other things to show where the deck shines. Uh, the deck is also playing uh, four copies of Through the Arc, which uh, against uh, other character decks, they can often easily get a, a filch out to get rid of such a card. But um, th the thing with uh, Through the Arc is uh, it will at least then force them to, to play filch. And in the cases where they can't, it's very impactful. So uh, feels like it's worth a slot, especially given that we, d we have so many slots uh, flexible in this deck that, that that you can fill with something uh, that it doesn't hurt that much to put this card in. 
and we we have a lot of draw with both Peeves, Colin, and Ginny, so it's easy to find the cards that we want. And we don't need to dedicate a lot of slots to power once again, so we're playing eight potions and four Snape, and that's really all we need. Um, yeah, so that's that's basically this deck, and uh, then uh, the other new deck we're looking at today is I would say a hybrid between two decks that have been shown before on the channel. Uh, it's the Ron's Help deck that is a character deck that finish our, uh, finishes our opponents off with Venomous Tentacular Juice and Dobbis Help. Um, and the Item Draco deck that does the same thing but uses uh, Draco Malfoy Slytherin as a starting character to gain extra actions. So this deck is jamming items into a character uh, version of the item deck. So we're playing Draco to get extra actions from items and then uh, we put a few items in the deck to um, to give us more actions and uh, give us power so we can replace the plan of playing one shop uh, with playing items like Dragonheart Wand and self stirring Cauldrons that can give us a lot of item quickly. Uh, and here is where uh, nearly Headless Nick comes in because we can <laughs> play this guy who's actually a ghost and once per game search our deck for two item cards and put them in our hand. Um, and this means that it's quite easy for us to just play one copy of, of these three powerful items, Sickle, Dragonheart, Wand, and Self-Stirring Cauldron because... Um, because we can search out the particular one that we need with Nearly Headless Nick. Nearly Headless Nick is also a Gryffindor character, so we can search him out with the Fat Lady. And as such, if we need him, it's usually easy to get a hold of him. Although he's not, you don't necessarily have to get him to have this deck work, but it's a nice addition. And we're playing a lot of copies of Malfoy. Um, because, yeah, we're, we really want to get those actions rolling as quickly as possible and increase our odds. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah, so it's quite a, I would say it's quite a speculative deck. Um, most of the decks is, uh, sorry, most of the slots is stuff you would expect. So, of course, we have the Fat Lady, Seamus, Ginny, uh, the good old engine. Uh, we have uh, Draco Malfoy that I mentioned, nearly had the snick. And the other picks are, are the pretty usual obvious ones. Madame Pomfrey, uh, we're playing Flitwick because we're playing Charms Power. We have one Dean Thomas, uh, one Argus Filch, one McGonagall, one Quirrell, and one Hannah Abbott. Then we can use Chocolate Frogs to search out some Wizard or Witches from our deck. We finish our opponent off with Dobby's Help and Venomous Tentacular Juice. And we're just playing some Lessons to uh, be able to play our cards. And we're playing more potions uh, because we want to be able to play self stirring cauldron, which requires us to discard two potions lessons from play. Um, yeah, so this uh, both both of the decks today they are kind of uh, rough. We could probably be optimized a lot more, um, but uh, th they kind of show off uh, yeah interesting concepts which I like to do. Um, so yeah, we're gonna see how these fare against some decks now, and uh, let's jump into first the, um, the it's gonna be the Peeves deck against uh, one of the disruptive creature decks, McGonagall control deck. So let's start a new game. Um, there we go. So now we just have to wait a little bit. And later on, I will also be talking about um, changes made to, or some some uh, potential changes to the Fred and George deck, and uh, uh, potential changes to the Angelina deck that were shown on the channel before. Um, so there we have the Peeves, Peeves deck. And, um, oh. To change the view here that's a little better um, yeah and also a uh, shout out to um, 
guy, uh, Frankie Friday, from, from the Harry Potter Discord, uh, that I know also has a classic uh, Harry Potter deck on his website, the, the, the Dark Mark, that utilizes uh, the Magical Mess Remover as well in a similar fashion. But of course, since it's a classic deck, it can use uh, Caught by Snape that I'm not playing with. Um, <laughs> okay, this is one of those moments where I wish uh, we were playing with a mulligan, because this hand looks awful. And I will point out that this is incredibly unlucky, because this deck plays... Uh, so you want some card that, that lets you draw cards um, when playing this deck, of course. And we are playing four copies of Peeves, four copies of Ginny, and four copies of Colin. So, um, so the odds that we get something that we can play are actually extremely high. Uh, sorry, something that we can play that lets us draw cards is extremely high. But, um... All right, so since we didn't get that, I'm just gonna use an action to draw a card. Cause we need to find, we need to find that. <laughs> Still didn't get it. Um, I think then we, we play Seamus and we use him. We know uh, he is not playing adventures because we know each other's deck lists. So we can safely discard these filch that normally could be used to discard adventures. Uh, so by using Seamus we get an extra action and then we can use that action to draw a card. Then we pass to him. So one way or another we need to be drawing cards otherwise we, we can't develop any threats. We in, uh, This is uh, an interesting deck because you, you don't need Ginny to, to draw enough cards. You have Peeves, you have Colin. But in our first 10 cards, we have seen none of those. So it's not going very well. So we, we, um, we have no choice but to keep digging. Starting to play cards here doesn't really make sense. So we got Snape. We have to draw another time. Okay, now we got Colin. So can you shame us for an extra action? We have a lot of crab and goyle in our hand, so we can discard two of those, I think. So we have one action to play something. We would like for Colin not to die, I suppose. So question is if we want to risk playing him right away. So, Colin is not the most ideal way to do this. Because we are helping him draw as well. Let's play Snape. So he can get rid of Snape, but we'll just, we'll just accept it. Again, remember, he can disrupt us. But we have a lot of ways to heal ourselves and we can do that without him having the opportunity to stop us. Same thing with Quirrell. We can get Quirrell out without him having the opportunity to uh, stop us from playing the Quirrell. And so we may have more time than you might think to get this right. Um, okay. Let's see. Um, so now we could play Colin. Is that what we want to do? So we could play through the arc. And we could also get an extraction from Seamus. And of course, because he's McGonagall, he could get rid of through the arc for free. 
Then if we get another copy, you would actually need to skip actions and that, that would be really useful for us. So I think it's, it's better to just get the through the arc rolling and make him use his power so that next time we get a through the arc, we can, we can make use of it for real. So yeah, so I'm going to use Seamus again, discard a potions. We don't need it, I think. And I don't think we need this crab and goil. We play this through the arc and we can play So I'm wondering here if I should play, if, if I should use the effect of... Snape? I'm just gonna go ahead and... Well, if I play Colin, then Colin is vulnerable. I guess it doesn't... I guess there's no way we're gonna play him without being vulnerable. No, that's not true. If we save him, we could play him next turn. So we just play a lesson. And we could heal here with Snape. But then I would shuffle back a bunch of cards that we don't want to draw. So I won't do it right now. I, I think I care more about having good options in the deck and not making those options worse by shuffling back cards. But yeah, now he could he could start messing with us. So he plays the porcupine. Uh, through the arc doesn't stop him from playing creatures, of course. Uh, porcupine and a lesson. So he's now at six power. Okay, so we draw a card for the turn. Now I think we play we play Colin. And uh, we use Colin. So we both draw three. And we could use Seamus to get an extra action. Which is probably a good idea. Um, question is just what we discard. I mean, Filch, obvious, obvious pick to discard. Other one, not as obvious. We want to keep Hannah because that she, she could get through the arc back, which would be really good. And another, an extra copy of Seamus and Snape is probably good. Although Quirrell... Mm. Okay, I'm going to get rid of Snape and, and Filch. Um, so Snape and Filch. And then we play Quirrell. And pass. <laughs> I'm going to rearrange these. Got to have some some kind of order here. Characters in one place, lessons in one place. And now, after he draws, we take two damage from the porcupine. Um, let's see. Draw two. Yeah, we draw two discard, two cards. We lose a Peeves and a Madame Pomfrey. We would have we would have liked the Peeves. Yeah, but the through the arc is, is something I, I wasn't thinking that much about, but um, it means that this matchup is probably really, really bad for him. Even worse than I originally thought, because uh, even though um, we can always do things if he messes with us, uh, if he doesn't get to mess with us at all, we can be way more efficient with how we do things and kind of lock him out of... Uh, doing anything important because if he can't spell uh, play spells he can basically just play creatures and we have an easy way of putting the creatures back in his hand okay now he's all the way up to eight power so he has all the power that he will ever need he passes to us 
and he's he's saving <laughs> his uh, mechanical power. So we want to use Colin to to draw. He should also draw. Yeah, there we go. And okay, so now we got Peeves. That's kind of nice. So we can use Seamus. And we discard. What are we discarding? I think still Crab and Goyle is not important. We can get rid of that. We already have an extra copy of Seamus. So we can get rid of him. And then we can play Hannah and we can play something else. We still have one action left over now. So playing and using Peeves would actually put him at a lower card count, which may not be a terrible idea. Sure, we can do that, I think. We <laughs> just get rid of the cards that we have. Maybe we would want to play Madame Pomfrey first. But this is, it's kind of nice because we're getting rid of a lot of these expensive spells that he would have liked to play. Yeah, actually a lot, a lot of really good cards. Like three Scribbly Force, for example. I think there was three Defendo as well. There were some creature cards that he can't play anymore. So that's really good. And we're supposed to take damage from this, uh, from the porcupine. So the problem with discarding Pomfrey is you can't shuffle Pomfrey back because she's a healing character. So you want to be careful about getting rid of your healing characters for that reason. Now he's using McGonagall, so we lose out through the arc. But we already have another through the arc in our hand, so this is looking really good for us. So he's playing Scribbly for us, targeting Colin and Seamus, and we have a bunch of Colins in um, our hand. So we're gonna discard the Colin and get Seamus back into our hand. So Scribbly for us lets him target two cards, and we choose one of them that's discarded, and the other one we put back. Just telling him to mark uh, that he has used McConaughey. I think we we would be able to keep track, but it's always it's always good. Yeah. So he. Yeah, he has one more action. From his standpoint, probably the highest priority should be to get rid of this Han Abbott. But looks like he cannot. So he plays Lost Notes, uh, which gets rid of a lesson or item. But we don't have items, so I'm just going to discard our lesson. 
And okay, now things are going great. So now we just we draw a card for the turn. Um, play Seamus. We use his ability. So we only need one of the Collins. And only one of the Potions Lessons. And then we can we can play through the arc again. And this time, if he wants to deal damage to us, he actually has to skip action. Uh, sorry, if he wants to play spells and get rid of through the arc, uh, he needs to skip uh, four actions in total. I'm not sure why he's shaking it. Oh, oh, he's skipping. He's skipping two actions. Um, yeah, so I forgot to take damage from the creature, so I'm doing that now. And I'm drawing for the turn. So if he skips um, two again next turn, we can just replace that through the arc. So now I think we, we play Colin and we use his ability. So we both have to draw three. And then we can we can use Seamus to get one more action. So we can get rid of the Ginny. And I think a potions lesson. Because we already have the power that we need. The question is if we want to play Ginny now um, the main card we want to draw is madame pomfrey for healing and there are some copies left so i'm gonna play Ginny. and i we don't need to use snape to heal yet we're not in a rush because can't get rid of Snape right now because he can't play spells. So we're just going to pass to him. And we're going to take two damage from the porcupine. Oh, so he's doing it this way instead. He's playing a creature and he's skipping one action on three, oh, whoops. All right, so that makes sense. Um, so he's passing to us and I'm gonna draw with Ginny. So that's gonna be eight cards in total with the mandatory plus Ginny's ability. So now we can start doing some mean things, I think. We can use Curl's ability to get his creatures back into his hand. That puts him at 13 cards in hand. Then we can play Grip Hook and use Grip Hook's ability. So I use Seamus. We can get rid of these Ginnies. We don't need them. Uh, we use Squirrel. So we gotta remember here... We we haven't used an action yet this turn. So we could also use Colin. Which I think I will do. Looks like he's, he's not noticing that we're using Quirrell. There we go. And then... I'll use Creevy. Make us both draw three. So that was one action. And we can we can play Grip Hook and use Grip Hook's ability. So he's gonna have to discard his 16 cards and then draw 16 more. So that's pretty good for one action. 
and n now it should it should certainly be time to use Snape, I believe. Or is it? Actually, he can't really get rid of Snape next turn. Well, actually, yeah, he can. He can mess with us in a bunch of ways with with Dobby's disappearance. We can we can actually we can check his discard pile because Dobby's disappearance lets him get rid of cards without really spending an action. So if he has a bunch of copies of that card, he can mess with us pretty easily. And there's only one in the discard pile, so he could return a lot of cards to our hand. Um, so he can skip one. He can skip one action to get rid of through the arc, and then he can play all the Dobby's Disappearance he has in his hand, and he can also play an, one more card. Oh, I actually forgot about something. So so this was kind of a miss by me. I could play Magical Mess Remover to get rid of through the arc, and then play another through the arc. So... Um... Yeah, I, I, I actually, I, I just didn't from realize that that interaction was possible. But the, it should still be fine for us. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna... I'm gonna use Snape to heal here. And we still have one more action after that. So I want, I want to leave one Peeves and one Grip Hook there so I can get them back with Hannah. And I want to use Magical Mess Remover to get rid of the Grip Hook and Peeves that we have. Um... Actually, Crab and Goyle is not too bad right now, I guess. It's not the best card. I, I guess it doesn't matter that much what we get. Um, um I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't think it matters that much. So I'll get these. Send them to the deck. And then we'll shuffle. We still have one more action. So now we could play Magical Mess Remover. Get rid of... Actually, I should probably use... Hannah first, because that means he can't stop us. Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. yeah. This makes sense. This forces forces a win on our next turn. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I haven't played this deck in a while, so I'm being a bit slow. But okay, uh, yeah. So we can get back Grip Hook and Peeves, and then we can play Magical Mess Remover, so we can get rid of Hannah. Grip hook, Quirrell, Snape, and Peeves. And uh, then we're happy. Yeah, so there's... Yeah, it was uh, unnecessary, uh, unnecessarily slow there, because, yeah, just having... There's no way you can get rid of grip, uh, grip hook and Peeves from our hand. If we just play those next turn, we win. He only has eight cards left in his deck. Okay, I guess. Yeah, if he had if he had a way to so he skips one action to get rid of through the arc. If he had a way to deal like eight damage to us, then yes, then 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 playing Peeves wouldn't wouldn't work. 
because we draw first when we use Peep, so we would draw our last seven cards before he does. So now he's using Dava's Disappearance, as I talked about, to get rid of our cards. Um, but his deck has no way of dealing direct damage, it only deals damage through creatures. So this is showing, again, how effective this kind of Peeps deck um, is against, against decks that just rely on creatures like that. So he, he knows it's over, but he's he's just demonstrating. Um, yeah, so we, we could win here in several, several ways, but we're gonna make it simple. We'll just use Gripbook. So he has 14 cards, he has to discard them. GG. Um, yeah, okay, so that, that uh, I think that showcased very well um, how this deck beats this, this kind of deck that he's playing. Um, if it was up against another character deck, I think it would look way different. But these matchups looks, look very one-sided because he has uh, he doesn't have a meaningful way to interact with us. Um, and and <laughs> that might may not be that fun to, to play, but it's uh, interesting to know that that's how it works in these kinds of matchups. Um, and also to know that it, this deck is not overpowered or anything it can be beat by other kinds of decks um okay so we're gonna move on to me playing the item run deck uh first i'm gonna take a very short break and then i'll be right back
<laughs> All right, welcome back, everybody. Uh, now we're going to be testing the um, item run deck that I showed at the start of the stream, and it's going to be up against the item rush Draco deck from a previous stream. And I think the item rush Draco deck still hasn't won a game on stream, so maybe maybe this is going to be, you know, it's lucky break. Um, the thing that uh, it has going for it in this matchup is that we are playing a very unmean version of a run deck. We're not playing any muffling draughts to stop our opponent for from playing spells. And this means we can't really stop the combo of uh, Draco, but he needs to draw the combo. Uh, that is usually the, the biggest problem. Looks like he hasn't rolled. Uh, there we go. Okay, so he rolled 18, so he gets to start. Let's see what we get for our starting hand. <laughs> We're not drawing the greatest starting hands today. Last game it didn't really matter because the matchup was so in our favor. But... Here it is a bit of a problem. So we don't have any draw in our starting hand. Maybe we, we get something on our on our first draw. We do have Seamus though. That's nice. But uh, you quickly run out of cards to use for Seamus if you don't have something to give you more draw. Okay, I'm <laughs> I'm just passing the turn to him to to show that it's his turn. Um, so he drew a card and he played a charm. So it looks like he doesn't have the greatest starting hand either, because normally you would want to open with two lessons or a lesson and a knut to get you an extra action and then play something else. Uh, so we get a card. Um, we're gonna start by drawing an extra card. <laughs> so we have the Malfoy that we want, but the rest is this of this is not great. So we play Seamus. Uh, might as well start uh, using him. So we get rid of Quirrell because we actually Quirrell could be hmm could be useful. Okay. Now, now I actually I have to think. Well, we definitely get rid of Seamus because his deck has no way to disrupt us. So we don't need extra copies of Seamus. And the same goes for Draco, I guess. So let's get rid of that and we can keep the Coral. That makes a lot more sense. Uh, and then our last action will be to draw a card. And then we can pass to him. So we got Knut. Um, we can still make use of that next turn. We can play Flitwick, Draco, and Knut to trigger Draco, uh, get our extra action. But uh, without the draw, we're not really doing much. So we, we really need the draw. Now he got his Knut, gets him an extra action from, from Draco's ability. And then he's able to play two uh, lessons. So this might be a really quick game because the this uh, Draco Rush deck it can get up to a high power count very fast. So we draw a card for the turn. Um, yeah, this is so bad. Um, mm -hmm. So we play the Flitwick. Gives us the Charms power. We play the Draco. Uh, we use Seamus. And we can get rid of two. Charms lessons, I figure. Then we can play a Knut, which gives us an extra action from Draco. And we can use that action to draw another card. And <laughs> we still don't have Ginny, but it's okay. It's okay. 
Things will be fine. We just need to find the fat lady or Ginny. Uh, so that we can get Ginny on the board, get our draw going. So this is r not really demonstrating uh, the deck at all. Unfortunately, you know, sometimes it's just uh, like this. Um, that you you just don't you just don't get the cards <laughs> that you're supposed to you know if you have four copies of the fat lady and four copies of Ginny then your chances of getting Ginny out within turn two is really high and we are actually also playing four copies of chocolate frogs in this deck that can also get Ginny so this happening is very unusual but it still happens sometimes. So we just just make the most of it. So he gets an extra action, uh, action from Knut at the start of his turn. Uh, plays the Copper Cauldron, which of course triggers Draco. So he gets an extra action. So he should have uh, three actions now. First one, he plays the Potion back. So if he if he drew his combo. Oh he can't play the dragon hard one. Cause uh, the dragon hard one requires two charms power, so you can't play it if you only have one charms power like he has. Okay, so he's undoing parts of his turn. Okay, so he's playing the book to get that Charms Power and then the Dragonheart one. So this puts him at, um, let's see, that's 9. So he's already at 9 power. Uh, now our Knut will trigger, so we get an extra, extra action from this uh, turn and Knut is gone. We draw our card for the turn. That card is certainly not a Ginny. So we will draw an extra card to start with. This turn we might actually use Quirrell just to buy some time. Although I'm not... well, maybe it's not the right time to buy time. Um, I think... no, I think we'll wait a little bit. Because if we, if we use Quirrell this turn to delay him one turn, we still won't be able to kill him next turn. So this is the wrong time to try to delay him. We will wait instead. So first action will be to draw a card. This is a Ginny. We have two actions left. So we can play Ginny. Well, we can play the Knut. And then we're still at two actions because we get one back from Draco. Then we can play Ginny. Play Quirrell. And we can use Seamus to get one more action. So let's do that. And I'm going to keep the... Wait, do I keep the... I already discarded two potions lessons, so maybe I'll, I'll just... I'll... Oh, sorry, two charms lessons. So maybe it's better to keep the... I don't know. I'll get rid of get rid of the charms lesson because I, yeah. Self serving cauldron is it's the most powerful thing I can get. So, I get, if he has the exact right cards, he can kill us now. But otherwise. He cannot. Because he's at 9 power. He could play a self stirring Cauldron to get to 11. And then he could play 2 Dobby's Help and a Venomous Tentacular Juice to kill us. 
but yeah, he doesn't have it. So he uses the standard book of spells to draw three cards. If, if this Draco deck is going to win a game, then this should be the game. Because we were just struggling forever to find Ginny. So he's playing uh, Magical Drafts and Potions, gets one action back, and puts a lesson down. Passes to us. So we finally... Uh, we get rid of Knut, which gives us an extra action. We use Ginny, so that means we draw six cards. And it's not exactly what we wanted to see. So we have three actions. There's a lot of options here. So we could play the fat lady and use her to get nearly headless Nick. But is that what we want? I guess no. We can use Flitwick to get one of the Knuts back if we want that. And if there is a particular wizard or witch we want, we can use Chocolate Frog. So what is the the most important thing here? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Can also play Dean Thomas and just see three more cards. I think that makes some sense. Let's do that. <clears throat> yeah, so we're definitely going to use Seamus. So let's do it. We discard characters we already have. So, so now we're still at three actions. And we can still use Flitwick here. I think this is the right time to use Quirrell. I'm not going to th think too much about it. <clears throat> and... Use Flitwick as well. So we get rid of Draco, that lady. We get Knut back. Oh, nope. So we can play the Knut. And then we're at uh, three actions again. And then my idea is we play the fat lady. We use her to find nearly headless Nick. So Nick is gonna be able to get us the exact items we want. We play him. And then our last action, we play a charms lesson. So we're setting up for a good turn next turn, I think. We can have four actions plus, if we search out a self-stirring cauldron, it's basically five actions. Actually, yeah, let's search now because it increases the odds that we can uh, draw the other combo pieces we want. And also the lessons that we want. Yeah, because if we draw potions, we can play the cell story. I think we can... 
Yeah, I think we could kill him next turn if we draw the right cards. So we used... So let's see. We're going to be at 3. With Seamus, we'll be at 4. And self and Carl Ring basically puts us at 5. So we use one action to play potions, that puts, it at, uh, puts, us, puts us at four actions. Play the self-stirring, gets us a six power. Um, okay, so that's, that's three, then Dragonheart Wand. I think it works out, but he just plays, okay, so he just plays Copper Cauldron and Potions. If he has self-stirring, so he's now at, uh, Seven power. So if uh, yeah, if he has self stirring cauldron, he can kill us next turn. So the Knut is discarded. We draw nine cards with Ginny. Ooh, this is not what we wanted because we only have oh we use flitwick so we need to mark that we only have one only have one combo piece in hand i'm trying to think maybe i was over ambitious here so if we, if we had dobby's help here and we were able to play that and venomous tentacular juice so it would be at 17 cards And then he would draw would draw 34 cards. So he would in total draw 44 and then draw one more. So it would actually be exactly lethal. That's kind of crazy. But we can't do that. So we use Seamus to get rid of some of these cards. We're trying to get out of kill range now, I think. And we can do that... Well, actually, I don't think there's a way we can get out of kill range. If he, ha <clears throat> if he has Venomous Tentacular Juice and self stirring Cauldron, we're probably in big trouble. Um. Oh, actually. So we discarded for the extra action. Let me just check. I'm pretty sure this deck plays Hannah Abbott. It should be playing it. And... We could, we could actually get Hannah Abbott from our deck with Chocolate Frogs. Oh, but there's nothing... There's nothing in our discard pile that she can get, so never mind. Well, oh wait, no, no, that's not true. She could get... She could get Tentacular Juice if we play it. Okay, so let's calculate it. So we're at... We are at four actions right now so we can play a potions lesson puts it as uh, puts it at, uh, us at three play the self stirring puts us at four and then we're at how much power six power then play the dragon heart wand that puts us at Well, it puts us at nine and three actions. So one action can be playing the Venomous Tentacular Juice. But then, yeah, playing Chocolate Frogs and playing Hannah Abbott, that is too many actions. So it doesn't work. That's unfortunate. So we're just gonna try to empty our hand as much as possible so be because that that lowers the chance that he can kill us on our next turn and i guess we'll maybe heal with madame pomfrey i'm not sure so we'll play the cauldron so we were at f uh yeah so we went down to three self stirring cauldron gives us an extra action itself and draco malfoy gives us one extra action so that means we are back at Four actions. 
So we can play... We can play four cards and then we'll have six cards in our hand. So if we have six cards in our hand, he can kill us with two tentacular juices or a Dobby's help with a tentacular juice. What if we heal then? So then we'll be at 37 cards. Um, 37 cards. One, two. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. We'll just try to get as far out of range as we can. One, two. Three. Four. And we'll use Madame Pomfrey. So, let's try to count. We're at six, uh, with Dobby's help we'd be at 16. And then with Venomous Tentacular Juice, that would put us at... Well, it would force us to draw 32 cards. <laughs> so it wouldn't, it wouldn't really help. So it doesn't actually matter. So we'll we'll just pass. If he has it, then then it's game over. But if he doesn't have it, then we win. <laughs> kind of kind of looks like he has it. So he plays Hellstar in Cauldron, puts him to up at three. Yeah, he plays another one, gets the action back for that. Of course, it doesn't trigger Draco again, but now he's at 11 power. Dobby's help. Yep. And Venomous Tentacular Juice. All right, nice. So the, the deck finally gets to win. We were just too slow. We didn't, we didn't get a good start. Um. All right, so... Now I want to actually want to show something uh, a little different uh, before the next game. So I want to talk about uh, before on the channel I showed a Fred and George Weasley deck and it was using Care of Magical Creatures and Charms Lessons. And the idea was uh, if you play Charms Lessons then you can return your adventures uh, back to your hand from your discard pile with end of year feast. And so when your opponent goes through the trouble of solving uh, your annoying adventures you can just get them back and play them again and you can be really 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 annoying um, but uh, unfortunately this meant that we had to play some other not as powerful spells like hover charm uh, hover charm is just uh, if you remember Dobby's Disappearance, it just returns one of your opponent's cards to their hand and you get one more action. Hover Charm is the same in, in, in a Charms form, but you don't get an action back, so it's way worse. Uh, and by playing Transfigurations, it means we can play more powerful spells. And the thing about uh, playing End of Year Feast, like we were, uh, I guess I can uh, show it. Here we go. Uh, is that sometimes you just didn't really... Um, have enough targets in your discard pile yet uh, or or it wasn't impactful enough so in some matchups it was really good in others it wasn't that good um like the the, the matchups where your adventures were really effective this is where this card was really shining um but in in the matchups like against character decks where they didn't have that much trouble dealing with your adventures this was not that powerful at all so what we're trying to do now is um, play a bit more of a versatile version of the deck. So I'm, uh, and I haven't tested this at all yet, so it's a new idea for today. Uh, it's playing just transfigurations in the deck instead. And this means that instead of the hover charm and end of your feast, we can play Dobby's Disappearance instead of hover charm and picking on Neville instead of end of your feast. 
And also I'm playing a bit fewer creatures to be able to play another adventure card that I haven't tried before. Um, locked in, which I think maybe is a card I underestimated, which means uh, I want to be trying it again. Again, uh, shout out to Frankie Friday for inspiring me to try this card. I saw it in a deck on uh, the website, The Dark Mark. Um, and I looked at it and I thought maybe maybe it's something I overlooked. So locked in uh, means that our opponent gets one fewer action on each of his or her turns. And in order to solve locked in, they have to discard four cards from their hand. And the reward is that they get to draw two cards. So it's uh, with Fred and George, it's quite powerful in that you can get it out. They immediately lose an action um, at the very least, which is really powerful. It can mess with them a lot. It forces them to discard four cards to uh, solve it. Of course, they get two cards back. So essentially, they're set back two cards, but they're also set back the action. So um, you are set back uh, one card in an action by playing it, and they are set back one action and uh, two cards by solving it at least. And of course, they're also losing some cards from their deck. Um, and it could be really good in combination with the other adventures we're playing, like escaping the Dursleys that kind of um, force our opponent to discard their hand, uh, because if they cannot solve locked in right away, then it becomes way, way better and gets them to uh, makes we can make them lose more than one action, which would be really great. Um, and of course, uh, cards like these can have downsides in that if your opponent draws a starting hand of seven cards where they don't maybe have the cards that they need, maybe you're playing against a character deck with Ginny in it and they don't have Ginny, then this could actually just be a help to them. They just discard four cards they don't need, then they get the reward draw two and they see their Ginny and play her. So uh, it's not, you know, it's not all great, but it's something I'll be trying today and I think it synergizes with both Escaping the Dursleys and Letters from No One, which is also uh, forcing our opponent to discard cards in order to solve it. So, uh, yeah, so that's, yeah, that will be uh, what we're going to be playing right now. So I'm going to create a new game and, and show this off. And um, and it's I'm going to be playing against the two new decks, uh, or the the ones that we have time to play against. So we're gonna start by playing against the Peeves deck. And um, yeah, um, so so we're playing in a matchup that is supposed to be really bad for us, and we'll we're gonna see how that works. Um, probably we'll get our Asses kicked in this matchup, I think, especially because if you play Escaping the Dursleys uh, versus this deck, they can just solve it and search their deck for Peeves, then play Peeves and uh, basically regain all the cards that they lost. But also, you have to discard uh, seven cards. Uh, sorry, discard your hand and draw seven cards. So essentially, uh, you're taking seven damage. And we are rolling. But uh, I think maybe against the item run, we have a little bit more of a chance. Because they care more about Ginny. We have ways to disrupt Ginny. Uh, we have some annoying adventures. Okay. Wait, so... Oh, we rolled better. So we actually... We get to start. Um, yeah, so now I'm wondering, like, do I even... Maybe I still play Escaping the Dursleys? Because if he searches his deck for Peeves... If he searches his deck for Peeves, then at least he's not searching his deck for Ginny. He could still search his deck for Ginny. But I feel like I just have to go for it. Because if he plays Peeves here and refills our hand, we're getting two cards back. It's not that bad. 
We're forcing him to use Peeves in a situation where he can't combine it with Grip Hook. So we're going for it. We're trying it. So I'm curious how, how he's going to respond to this, because he could just uh, discard his hand and get Ginny. That's like the normal response from a character deck. Oh, I guess also, yeah, he has he has eight cards. So if he gets Peeves, he doesn't get all his cards back. Yeah, so he's solving this. And if he gets Ginny, we can still harass him a little bit with these uh, letters from no one. And we hit... We hit some nice cards, Peeves. <laughs> a lot of Filches. Actually, three Filches. Huh, that's interesting. I don't think he should be searching for Filch. I think that's a big mistake. Um, I think he's going to regret that. Because Filch, um, so the thing with Filch is it, Filch lets you use an action to discard an adventure from play. But that doesn't work against Letters from No One because Letters from No One lets you use actions only to draw cards. So Filch can, can actually not be used against Letters from No One. And, and because of that, I think it's a big mistake. Because he, he might be thinking that he's protecting himself from all of our adventures. But he's not protecting himself against Letters from No One. So Letters from No One will still make him waste a bunch of time here. He's going to have to draw up to five cards. In order to be able to get rid of this. And that's going to buy us a lot of time. Which is exactly what we want. That is time he's spending not getting draw from Ginny. So he's just drawing extra cards. Um, so we draw a card for the turn. Oh, and that is perfect. We got a lesson, which means we have enough power to play the Sandstone Gargoyle. This one deals extra damage if he does not have... Oh, let me pass. If he does not have creatures in play. Um, and he doesn't play creatures in this deck, so this is already applying a lot of pressure. Three damage a turn. And because of how slowed down he is, it might actually work out. I'm not sure. So now he's solving letters from no one, because he has five cards. So uh, presumably he, um, yeah, he didn't have the cards that he wanted. So he just solved letters from no one to see some more cards. We should definitely not think that the game is over at any point just because we slowed him down here. Um, Because um, this deck has so much healing, it has ways to put our creatures back uh, into our hand, so we shouldn't we shouldn't get too optimistic. But uh, so he played Calling Creepy, and that one you actually also cannot use uh, when Letters from No One is in play, uh, because it doesn't purely make you draw cards. It it um, yeah, it makes your opponent draw two cards, uh, draw three cards as well, and in order for letters from no one to let you do something, it has to purely make you draw cards, I think. Okay, so I'm, I need to draw an extra card because we can only play one of these adventures this turn. So we draw an extra card and we play letters from no one and pass back to him. So to be fair to him, we drew basically the ideal adventures given, given what he did. Uh, drawing the two letters from no one was incredibly nice. One thing to note also about Locked In that we added is um, even if Filch gets rid of Locked In, uh, which probably... Is, is, no, 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 wait, wait. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think he wants to use Colin, but he can't. I'm pretty sure he can't. I think he has to purely be to draw. So this may be a bit confusing, but basically uh, on these cards it says um, everything after the two part of a card. So it says two draw two cards and then make your opponent draw three cards. Uh, that section is what the card actually does. So letters from no one is preventing you from uh, using actions to do something unless that thing is purely to draw cards. So I don't think I don't think he can use Colin when when letters from no one is in play. Maybe someone out there will correct us on this, but I'm pretty sure that that's how it works. And we are drawing some great cards here. Getting rid of more quills, that's always nice. So we <laughs> we get rid of two quills so far. Um, yeah, so now we could play a transfig to get to four power. So I think what we want to do is return calling Creepy to his hand. And I'm going to use Picking on Neville on his Filch. Which I think was his fourth Filch. Yeah, which means that our, our Through the Arc is actually going to be useful. Un un until he shuffles back his Filches. Um, because then he has no convenient way to get rid of Through the Arc. So he kind of needs to heal himself, get get the filters back. Uh, we already get rid of two Madame Pomfries, but there are of course, uh, yeah, and two Snapes as well. So he has two Snapes and two Madame Pomfries left. So there's definitely a lot of healing left and a lot of work left to do. We're kind of lucky with the creatures too. We're in, in, in a lot of ways, we're getting the perfect draw. Um, but also, of course, there early on, I think I think getting Peeves would have been a lot better for him. Um, but yeah, get, getting the Sandstone Gargoyles is perfect in this matchup. It's it's uh, the most damage for the actions. So he discarded five cards. And I was playing Colin as his first action and using him to draw three and making us draw three as well. So this could backfire if we if we get more ways to disrupt him, maybe. So we draw a card for the turn. Okay. So maybe we want to use picking on Avalon Colin. Or do we just want to put down the gargoyles? I think we just play picking on Avalon Colin to limit his draw options. Because it seems like Colin was his best draw option, at least until he drew those cards. And I can't remember if he took damage. And we play the second Sandstone Gargoyle. And we actually drew a third one. So we're only drawing the Sandstone Gargoyles, which is just pure luck. But that's great for us. 
And here, a thing to note is, yeah, until he shuffles back the filches, we may be in a really good spot. Because if he plays Curl and returns our Sandstone Gargoyles, um, we can play through the arc to prevent him from using the Magical Mess Remover. And that's going to buy time for our Gargoyles to deal more damage. Uh, and until he plays the Magical Mess Remover, he can't put another Curl on the board. And if you can't put another curl on the board, there's no way to stop us from dealing damage. And he doesn't have that much... Um, he doesn't have that many cards left in his deck. And... In terms of healing... It's actually still the same, I think. Two, two of each healing character left. But he is running out of cards. Slowly but surely. So, okay, so now he finally... So he has been pretty unlucky. Um, but he finally drew his uh, Shameless. So he can start getting extra actions. And don't be fooled. Like, he can still make a comeback here. It is looking rough. Especially because... Filch is... Oh, I actually, I just forgot about this. So... This is a, another way to do it. Um, so Filch is in his discard pile, but he does have Hannah Abbott. So Hannah Abbott can just get Filch back from the discard pile directly. But it has to be mentioned that as long as he doesn't have draw, then it's gonna be difficult for him. Although now he's using Hannah. So he has so many options for what to get back. It's pretty funny that he doesn't actually have um, he doesn't actually have a Ginny in the discard pile, so he can't get the Ginny draw. But he could get Peeves, which will let him get a lot of cards. He's choosing to get Colin. Seems like he's very opposed to Peeves this game. But I don't know if he has a good reason for it. Okay, so he does get both Colin and Peeves. So he doesn't get Filch. Which might be a mistake. I'm gonna shake Hannah just to show that he should mark the, that he used her. Because... Yeah, without Filch, if I put down the Through the Arc... It could be a big problem for him. So his last action is playing Colin. So I draw for the turn. My creatures will deal the damage. And I think... So he can't really... Uh, he can't really use... The Magical Mess Remover next turn. So I'm just going to play as many creatures as possible because through the arc doesn't really do anything I believe well let's start with the black bat and let's see there is only one quarrel left Um, actually, I'm trying to think. <laughs> so, in theory, he could play Peeves, Quirrell. No, he can't play Peeves, Quirrell, and Magical Mess Remover in the same turn. Because he would need a power as well, somehow. Okay, so we just play another Standstone Gargoyle. And we pass. No need to try to prevent him from playing spells yet. I guess the, the only benefit to playing it now, maybe maybe I should have, because uh, it means that if he does play Quirrell, then the last Sandstar Gargoyle is essentially a wasted action. On the other hand, if it doesn't have Quirrell now, he's basically dead.
Mm -hmm. All right, so he's making us both draw with Creevy. So the deck he's playing is is actually kind of tricky to play unless you have, you know, if you haven't played it before, I think. So he may be missing some of the lines that would help him here. Oh, he does have Quirrell. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of, I mean, it's it's uh, the classic uh, regret regretting. Um, Oh, he's discarding his Madame Pomfrey. That's really confusing me. Um. Because he can't... He can't get those back. Okay, so he is using Peeves. Yeah, it would have been nice to play the Through the Arc. I, I didn't think about this, but he is using Peeves. Okay, so we have to send all our cards to... The discard pile because peeves would be less effective and curl would be less effective um so now we get seven cards uh okay so we draw our card for the turn So he discarded his last Madame Pomfrey's, I guess because he wanted to use Peeves anyway, so it didn't matter. And then... Uh, oh, it seems like I need to plug in my hair, please. Oh, never mind. Um, yeah, and there's one, two... Are all the Snapes gone? There is one Snape left. One Snape left, so he can still heal himself. I think it's kind of fair to bet that the Snape is in his hand. And if it is, we can just play the Escaping the Dursleys. So we do that and we play a Garden Gnome for maximum pressure and yeah it looks like he's in an awkward position now Solving, escaping the Dursleys. Let's see if we were right. So yes, he did have Snape in his hand. Not sure why two cards are remaining. Those should those should go as well. Oh, that looks like that's just a bug. It's, it's just a bug. It looks like he didn't scar those two, but he actually did. Because they are like both in the... Yeah, they are in the discard pile. So now he gets to search a deck, a card from his deck. But if I look at it correctly, he doesn't have any healing left. So there's just no way that this is going to work for him. Yeah, he can get Grip Hook just to deal some damage to us, but it's not enough to finish us off. And so I think... I think this is just going to be it.
using Seamus. I guess because he doesn't... <laughs> okay, he's just killing himself with Colin. Um, okay, good game. I'm just gonna check APS time for one more. Yeah, I think a lot of that came down to the, the early decision to get Filch. Uh, I think getting Peeps there would have been better, or getting Ginny. Um, so I'm gonna create a new game, and we're gonna be playing this uh, Fred and George deck against the item uh, run instead. I'm uh, recreating just because I think that uh, is the only way to fix the bug with the, with the cards sticking around. Um, so yeah, that went better than expecting uh, expected against the character deck, but it looks like this these changes is making it a little bit better against character decks. Uh, oh yeah, we have to roll to see how who starts. So I guess he starts. Um, but I think normally the, the, the character decks will have an advantage. He, he just had a really slow start. I don't think he got the right card with uh, when solving Escaping the Dursleys. Okay, and now, now he has basically the perfect start. So this is exactly what you want. And um, getting both Ginny and Seamus on your first turn and a third character so now he already gets to draw three extra cards every turn and don't think we can compete with that but we're gonna try so he's gonna draw four not sure if we want to play these letters from no one we could just wait a little bit and then maybe play Escaping the Dursleys at, at a good time. Instead of using our actions for these that I think he can solve pretty easily. So he's going to draw and get to six cards just at the start of his turn. Then he could solve letters from no one and get to... Then he would be at three cards. I guess that would mean that he cannot use Seamus that turn at least. So maybe it's worth it. Yeah, at least this turn I think is worth it. So we go for it. So we basically stop him from getting an action. We force him to get rid of some cards. So it's not totally useless. But yeah, if, if, these, uh, if the adventures don't do too much, we will just try to get to four power so we can play the black bats. And then, if he doesn't put a Filch or McGonagall on the board, we can put uh, a play Escaping the Dursleys when he's about to get to a high card count in his hand to make him discard everything. So he has to be a little bit careful of that. And I think the deck was only playing one Filch and one McGonagall. So if we play the Escaping the Dursleys at the right time, it can be super good. So he drew a card, presumably because there's something... He wants to keep most of the cards in there. And then he solves letters from no one. This 
discarding a lot of the items actually. <laughs> he already drew all of the items that there's only one copy of in the deck, funnily enough. And discarding a Knut as well. Knut is also interesting because um, if you have a Charms, it would be perfect here. Then you can play a Charms and the Knut. So presumably, presumably he doesn't have that either. Oh, he already drew Filch as well, so that's terrible for us. But we can we can get around Filch. We just need to get four power and draw Dobby's disappearance uh, so that we can uh, put him back in hand and then play Escaping the Dursleys. Okay, so now, right now, our adventures are essentially useless because he would get to eight, he could solve it, and he could still use Seamus that turn. So I think we'll just we'll just play the two power and hope to get the black bats rolling as fast as possible. And then we're hoping we'll get a transfiguration and Dobby's disappearance. So that uh, at one point here we get Filch back into his hand and we're able to play Escaping the Dursleys and uh, get him back down to a low card count. Because that'll actually make it hard for him to, to pull off his combo. So, plays the Charms, plays the Knut, of course gets one action back from, from Draco. Plays the Fat Lady as his third, and then he can use Seamus to get one more action. These character decks with extra actions are, can get super crazy. Discarding Draco and Fat Lady. And just playing a lesson. Okay. So it's back to us and we're hoping to get a lesson. And we didn't. No, that's unfortunate. Yeah, it's really hard for us to mess with him because he draws a lot of cards, but he also gets so many actions that he can, he can basically play all the cards that he used. But anyway, before we can even really mess with him using Escaping the Dursley, Dursleys, we would need Dobby's Disappearance, and we don't even have a Transfiguration lesson yet. We can play letters from no one, and that uh, cannot be removed with Filch, but he can just discard five cards. So here he, he will draw six cards next turn with, uh, with the help of Ginny. And he'll be at eight. He could discard five of those, draw two more. All right, so our first action has to be to draw a card. Okay. We wanted a transfiguration, so that's nice. All right, so we, we just play it. We just prepare for the next turn. And if we are lucky, then we get a Dobby's Disappearance. <laughs> so now he gets the extra cards. He gets extra action from Knut. It's looking difficult for us. Because <laughs> he's getting everything he wants. <clears throat> and we are a bit too slow with starting to deal damage to him. When, uh, if, it, if it's character deck against a normal deck and the character deck gets the perfect start, it's, it usually doesn't work. Like, if they just get Ginny and Seamus the first turn, it's really hard. Oh, now he has McGonagall as well to make things even more difficult. Okay, so McGonagall can 
discard an adventure for free uh, once per per game. So, um, yeah, now even if we get a Dobby's Disappearance, escaping the Dursleys doesn't work. We would actually need two. We would need to get rid of both McGonagall and Filch to pull that off. So now that option isn't really there anymore. Yeah, so he's played one, two, three cards for the three actions he had, and then he's going to get an extra one with Seamus. Of, of course, uh, Knut gave him another action this turn. So the best we can do now is just play our Black Bats and hope to deal enough damage to kill him before he kills us. One thing that is speaking in our favor is that he already lost the Dragonheart Wand and the Self-Stirring Cauldron. And those are the cards that let him get up to 9 or 10 power quickly, which is where he needs to be to, um, to play his combo. But just as I say that, I realize that he has Hannah Abbott, so he could just get those cards back from his discard pile and be fine. So that's problematic. At least that means Hannah, if, if he does that, Hannah can't get the other cards back. So Hannah couldn't then also get back a Venomous Tentacular Juice to make it easier to pull off the combo. Okay, so the best we can do here is apply as much, pr much pressure, pressure as possible. So we play the two black bats. They deal two damage each when they, we play them. And uh, yeah. Yeah, maybe this is looking just... It's, it's, it's uh, getting harder and harder to imagine a way where we actually win here. Maybe if all of his combo pieces are just stuck on the bottom of his deck, that, that may be the only out we have here. So he, he gets to draw, of course, uh, eight in total this time, seven from Ginny and his normal draw. And he's thinking a little bit. He doesn't. He didn't get the the Knut extra action this turn, so he's playing with his normal three actions, normal for a character deck. <laughs> this is also also the the contrast between the character decks and the non-character decks. The non-character decks, they just play their cards pretty quickly and pass. Character decks, um, you're offered a lot more options, so it can be more fun to play. Apart from the fact that they're very powerful. Now there is of course some more uh, play um, with the unique rule, if you play with the normal classic rules, where um, you can you can build the deck to stop your opponent um, uh, from playing Seamus by playing Seamus as your starting character, but we're not playing with that stuff here. So there is some more nuance in terms of the types of character decks that exist in, in the normal classic format. So he's using Seamus to get an extra action. He played Flitwick. He may use Flitwick to get back something here if he wants. But he doesn't. Looks like he's he's happy. So he is now at six power. Okay. Yeah, Letters from No One would, would do nothing here. So... We just... Oh, he already took the damage. Okay. So we play another Black Bat. So we, we can't really do much more this turn. So we just try to put as much damage as we can on the table. 
Because any adventure we play, he could just get rid of with McGonagall. And our last action will be playing the Sandstone Gargoyle. And we just pray. But there is not much use in praying. We are definitely gonna die. I think. He has a Dobbis help in Discord Pile now that he could get back as well. So yeah, he's drawing 10 cards and he should definitely have seen what he needs to kill us now. If he does not, that's a miracle, especially given the fact that he can get two cards back with Hannah and one card back with Flitwick. Actually, maybe I take that back. I'm trying to think. So he has, he has three actions this turn. Well, so the thing is, because he has Draco, getting back self-stirring cauldron means that he will essentially be at four actions. So he can he can get to he is at six power now. He can get to actually no, he's at he's at seven power. So he can get to nine power by playing a self-stirring cauldron. And then he'll have four actions left. And after that. He could play, for example, three Venomous Tentacular Juice, or he can just play another card that gives power, then use Hannah to get Dobby's help and Venomous Tentacular Juice back, and then he just needs three combo pieces to be able to kill us. <clears throat> um, okay, so... <clears throat> um, okay, he uses Hannah Abbott to get Venomous Tentacular Juice and Dragonheart 1 back. <clears throat> So he plays the Dragonheart one, <clears throat> and he will of course get the action back, and then he uses Seamus, so that puts him at three actions now. Uh, wait, does he have enough power? Let me think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, he does. And then he had three actions. So he could play Dobby's Help, make us draw 10. Dobby's Help, make us draw another uh, 10. We'll be at 24. He plays Venomous Tentacular Juice to make us draw double what we have in our hand. And that's game. So we write GG. Well played by him. Uh, it was getting close, actually. But uh, yeah, he had he had enough there to, to kill us. And uh, yeah... Um, so let me let me go back to to this screen. So uh, that concludes the stream for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, I had a good time playing. Um, just want to say, um, yeah, thank you for watching, and um, I I will be back with more Harry Potter streams. Not sure exactly when. Uh, the Following streams will be, I think, more fun casual decks, focus more on just uh, fun deck building and less on um, meta, meta calls, just like some, some creative ways to enjoy the game, some cool combos that you can play in decks that, that don't necessarily have to be that good. And another thing that I really want to try on the channel that I haven't done yet is to play the revival format. My plan is to... Um, talk a little bit about, make make a deck in the revival format, talk a little bit about my thoughts, and I, uh, yeah, and, and then enter a tournament, and I want you guys to see the experience from my perspective entering the, the tournament with a deck that I think will be good, and then we'll see how it turns out. Is the deck good? Does it suck? How well will I do when I play? And uh, why were things working? Why were they not working? Um, that's something I would really like to try. So look forward to that in the future. Um, at some point I may also try the original classic format. Uh, we'll see. Um, but um, and of course uh, I've, I've, I've started um, doing Hearthstone on the channel as well. There is one stream up for that if you're interested. But uh, there will 
probably be more Hearthstone. There will be also probably be other card games. I plan on talking about Yu-Gi-Oh! and World of Warcraft TCG if I get the time. Uh, also kind of uh, limited format, so like early retro versions of the game uh, with some... Uh, the Yu-Gi-Oh! will be with some uh, house ban list. Um, anyway, I'm rambling now. Thank you for watching. I uh, look forward to more streams and uh, see you soon.